Hi, this is Jenny, and welcome to Jenny's Art Studio for Kids. Today we're going to be doing a hot air balloon in the sky, and this is mine. I've got uh, a couple other ones. My son Connor, and my daughter Guinevere, and my daughter Kate. They're all different, they're all fun. Um, fun examples. So let's just jump right in. I'm going to be using um, kind of a medium size round tip brush. This is a number eight. And a pencil. And an eraser. And my paints. And first of all, we're going to go ahead and draw, let me see here, draw a circle. Okay, let's just use something. This isn't going to make it a very big one. Let me get something bigger. <laughs> Bear with me here. I'm going to draw a little circle. And the neat thing about this, it's a fun way of showing you how circles can make lots of different things. And all of our, all of art is really shapes. So we're going to make a circle and then we're going to make a triangle to make our balloon. It's almost like an ice cream cone. Use any kind of object to make a. I think this one a little bit wider at the bottom to make it more realistic. And use my eraser to erase the lines I don't want. Okay, now we'll make the opening at the bottom. Just a little oval, very narrow shaped oval. That'll be kind of a darker. And then the bottom basket is just a, basically a square. Or more of a rectangle, I suppose. And our ropes. Lots of different ways you can do this. I'm going to put one in the back. <clears throat> okay, let's just. We've got our basket and our. And you can draw some other ones. Like maybe we want a couple more smaller ones. I'm just kind of do. You may hear kids in the background. They've been told to be quiet. But you know how kids are. <clears throat> okay. Now, with watercolor, if you want anything to be lighter or white, you have to leave space for that. Otherwise, it will get colored. It will get um, whatever you do. Uh, if you paint over it, it's going, it's going to get that color underneath, so it wouldn't be a true, true color. Okay, I'm gonna use my one inch. We're just gonna go ahead and put water on the whole thing except for the hot air balloon. And I would normally go right up to the very edge, but I'm going to leave a little bit of space. So you want to just go right up to the edge, even, even paint in here. And this is why. I, uh, I'm not going to stop my movie. 
my video. I will show you why in a little bit. Right. Just leave this spot. It's kind of funny how hard it is to talk and paint at the same time. Okay, that's starting to dry, so, oops. Just go right up to the edge. Okay. Get one of your blues. Just try the different ones. See which one you like the best for sky color. I kind of like the ultramarine. Yeah. Actually, I think I'm just going to put this down a little bit. Kind of livens up your paints and then it dries eventually. Just going to, that's kind of a little bit too. Sometimes these colors get mixed. So, just real light, not too dark. <clears throat> Usually I do, I like to be, it to be darker at the top. You know, if you look at the sky, that's kind of how it looks. When you leave, um, when you leave little spots that don't have as much blue, it it gives more of a um, cloudy look, which is kind of fun. You can always kind of. Let this these colors run together too. It's fun. Just gonna not do quite as much detail over here. The more water the sky has on it, the more realistic it's gonna look. See how fun that that is? This looks kind of like a little cloudy area. Now, all of your edges are going to be kind of hard. It's like where the where where the the paint ends is kind of where the harshness starts. I don't know if that makes any sense. So you want to have be specific about where you end. Using a couple different colors of blue, just kind of experimenting a little bit. And if you, <clears throat> if it's too bright, you just go back and you add a little bit of water and you kind of move it around. Yeah, that's okay. Have a little bit of bright blue spots. It's fine. This is pretty wet. Oh, I forgot I was going to do... Oops. Okay, you get the idea. You can always, if you want to put some mountains back there, just be creative. And then I would love to see what you guys come up with. This is fun. Okay, so normally what you'll want to do is let this dry. We don't have time for that. So I'm just going to be really careful and I probably just won't paint all the way to the edges. Because if I paint this now, 
you see here, my daughter didn't wait to, uh, to paint. And her beautiful, it's still beautiful. It looks kind of like an exploding basket. So I forgot I was going to paint the, or draw the lines first. So you probably want to do this. I'm just doing one right down the middle. And then you can kind of start really narrow and then begin to go down. It's just one way of doing it. Lots of different ways. My kids did them all different, so, and they all turned out fabulous. All right. This one I'm just going to leave. I think I might even made it, make it. Okay, I'm just going to do this one so that it's kind of. Um, no, that's not bright enough. Let's make it a brighter blue. Purple. Of fun though. The colors are bleeding together. one I'm going to go So with my other one I um alternated between so like I painted this and then I painted this and then I painted this and then I went back so that it gave time to dry so that the colors didn't bleed together like over here. It's just kind of fun. But normally you want, to want your colors to be nice and crisp for, for a balloon anyway. See how I noticed that one of my daughters was taking like a flat brush and she was wanting her lines to be perfect and so she was taking it and she was kind of going like this. But if you'll take your, the tip of your round brush and you start at the top and you go down and you push harder as you're going down and then you can practice lifting up and it makes it a, a smaller thing as you go up. Let's do orange between these two. Yeah, if these bleed together because it's not quite dry, it's okay. to see some pictures of what you guys come up with. Okay, let's do yellow again. Mm. Oh, this is perfect.
And what I tell my kids, you know, sometimes they don't, our paintings don't turn out how we anticipated they were going to look. And other than just crumpling it up and throwing it away, it's just great to just leave it in your, in your notebook or wherever you store your art and kind of look back and learn from it and you know, I think there's beauty in, really, in all the art that we do. Um, and we can even find beauty in the, the process of us learning and growing. And Look at that. That's gone. There it goes. So, if you don't want them to bleed together, you want to let them dry between, si in, between colors. I know that can be kind of frustrating for kids sometimes, but and for me. I can be impatient. And find a brown that you like. The more uh, the more water you have, the darker, uh, the lighter your color, your paint will be, and the more the drier your brush is the drier the pigment, the darker it will be. Now you can always come back, let this dry if you want it to be darker. Now you can take this paintbrush here and you can just do real light. See if I push hard, it's gonna it's gonna be wider like this. Wider. If I want it light and thin, I just do it really ever so gently. Hopefully this is showing up. And I've got quite the contraption here. Okay. Now, if you wanted a sun in your picture, you could leave a place white over here and do a yellow beforehand, and then just kind of do the blue up to it, or there's so many things that you could do and be creative, and um, also you can use a smaller brush if you want to do detail. Uh, one of my girls, a couple of the girls were painting little um, birds. Let's do some birds. Just so super easy. 